make me sing. Come on. Hard theme tune, though, isn't it? Yeah, let's bring it on. Let's bring it on. Okay, play a little bit more of your theme tune. Here we go. With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way. Peter. Huh. Because I'm happy. I'm alone. I told you not to make me sing. Go on, do it again. Go on. Go on. Happy. Uh, right, you're wondering why, <laughs> why are we... Make <laughs> it stop. <laughs> uh, right, that is the theme tune. You know, it is Peter Jones in the studio. Uh, author, self-help guru, all-round good egg. You can check out his website, all the W's, peterjonesauthor.com. He's the writer of How to Do Everything and Be Happy, How to Eat Loads and Stay Slim, uh, Invisible to Irresistible, and Start Dating and Stop Waiting. That was perfect. Have you been practicing? I have been practicing. <laughs> I didn't wait Mum was saying, shut your face. I didn't wait Mum was saying. That was absolutely spot on. It was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, you didn't get a single title wrong. I know, and you it's think so. It's a world first. It's because I've got a large tongue, because I've got uh, this thing, I've got a large tongue. Right. Um, and it's growing, and that's why I'm lisping. I kept thinking that I was lisping quite a bit. Yeah. But it's because my tongue's getting bigger. Is I've often wondered, I mean, <laughs> look, we're straight in and we're off topic immediately, but when I, when I recorded the books, I mm. found that my tongue sort of got bigger and it's exercise yeah is that what it is i think it is i think it's because i talk a lot it's, but that's probably what's made it swell up but i've always talked a lot so <laughs> that's just weird okay yeah uh today we're going to talk about uh things that are holding you back yep. um fears mainly well i'm going to talk about fears but yep. it, you know your listeners might want to talk about something else but the things that are holding us back from being fabulous yeah from being uh the best that we can possibly be now, if people don't know about you, I'm pointing at you, but if people right. don't know about you and this is the first time they've listened to the yeah. show, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got in from being an, an ordinary guy, shall we say, Yeah. Uh, to start writing about self-help and why you wanted to do it as well. Uh, okay, well, okay, we'll give, I'll give you the 30-second version. I used to uh, work in credit card banking, uh, making, uh, <laughs> making rich men even richer. Uh, I was a fix-it man. I used to, I used to go in there and, um, y- you know, they used to say, how do we ch- Jonesy, how do we charge more people uh, more interest or how do we you know d- recover these bad debts or how do mm. we do this that, and the other and I, I loved fixing problems I loved the people I worked with but I realized that actually I was just making poor people poor and rich people rich and uh, it was didn't really make me very happy mm. um, but you know I just thought that was my lot in life and then I met this wonderful lady uh, called Kate and um, we got married and three years three months to the day after we met she died um, from brain hemorrhage at Stansted Airport and it turned my life upside down and I thought to myself I'm not a very happy person and um, I you know and life's too short you never know when it's yeah. gonna when it's gonna when you know time's gonna run out and um, I thought if I don't do something about my unhappiness i could you know i'm going to be like this for the rest of my life so i took those problem solving skills i'd been using to make rich men richer and applied them to the problem of my life the problem of being unhappy yeah and that was oh what three years ago Mm -hmm. something like that and i came out with lots of ideas and and um lots of strategies practical things okay i'm not your normal self-help um, guru. I don't even think of myself as a guru. I'm a fix-it man. Mm. And I came up with lots of ideas, lots of different strategies, practical things that you can do to your own life to to, uh, to just increase the chances of you smiling during the course of a, of, of a day. And uh, they started to work. And I used to chat to colleagues and friends and, and tell them what I was doing. And they used to say, those ideas are balmy. <laughs> but they're <laughs> but they're funny. We yeah. love them. And you know, you you ought to write a book about mm. this. And uh, I, you know, writing is one of my passions. It's one of the things I've loved. And yeah. um, and short version is, I did write a book and I published it, and it did it extraordinarily well. Such that Audible, the audio book people, came along and said, um, "We would like to offer you a three book deal." Mm. And Harper Collins, they came along <gasps> and they said, "We would like to, you know, we would like." to publish it as well mm. and it's uh been published it's, it, you know i get uh, emails from people all over the world now because <laughs> you know you keep pu- picking up my book in all sorts yeah. of bi- bookshops everywhere you know not with oprah yet why is it going to get oprah i know she doesn't do, do a show does she but ellen or oprah you yeah. better write to her. <laughs> better write to her. I'd love you to go on and I can come with you as well. But, okay, right. Well, uh, no okay. Reason. So if well, <laughs> if Ellen, if you're listening out there and you want Hello. me to come along to chat, I'm afraid I can only come if I bring Michelle Ward with me. Uh, no, I, but I've, I've, you know, I've, it has been a fantastic journey. I've, you know, I've, I've went on 
BBC Radio 2. Oh, and, here we go uh, again. Know, Steve Wright. Yeah, Steve yeah, yeah. Wright. Blah, blah, blah. And your show, you know. No, have, it's too late That's now. how I met you, and we do the regular happy club. Yeah. Yeah. We, I was happy until you mentioned Steve <laughs> Wright again. You, was he quite nice, or is he miserable? He was nice, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he's a very nice man. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah, no, in the, uh, not a patch on yourself, obviously. No. Has he still got a moustache? Um, y- yes, I think he has. Yeah, a bit like mine. I yeah. Shave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me happy having facial hair, but don't mind. Uh, right, off we go then. But well, the thing is, is that this happiness journey has been sort of like has had its peaks and troughs. Okay, yeah. I'd like to say that I did all these uh, different happiness strategies, and I've been blissfully happy ever mm-hmm. since. And that's not entirely true. <gasps> and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about this morning. Yeah. For instance, do you remember back in January when we did uh, Happy Club? What my goals were? You probably won't. Do you remember my vision? That's testing your memory, isn't it? I knew oh, this I would happen. Oh, I can't remember. Do you remember? I, ca- I, ha- I sat down and I did this exercise and I set aside a whole day to to, to, to reevaluate my life. Yes. And I sat down and I decided, um, I thought, what would be, be the perfect life for me? And I wrote down the phrase, today is another day mm-hmm. sitting in the sunshine yep. uh, whilst uh, writing fiction yep. whilst my wife um, goes and makes us a sandwich. That was it. Yes, yep. yes, yes, yes. You remember the sandwich, yes, don't you? Sandwich. Everybody remembers. <laughs> <It's a> sandwich, <laughs> and from that, I, t- I took three goals. That was the first goal was to go for, uh, live in another country. Mm. Okay, well, I'm actually obviously still here, but you know these are these are long term goals. Yeah. And the second one was uh, to find a wife. That took me by surprise. Really? Uh, Sorry. To, well, to, to, me, to find a wife that took you by surprise. No, that took me oh, by surprise. That, that was oh, the goal. There was a gap in this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, heard that, that wrong. There's a Sorry, comma Sorry. that I missed. <laughs> and then the third one was to write fiction because you know up until now for the past sort of like two three years i've been writing non-fiction yeah but my love is really writing fiction and you and back in may <laughs> uh you, you uh, when i was on your show you you were talking about you know um you said uh, when's this novel coming out because mm. i told you previously told you on a previous show it's supposed to come out at easter mm. and it didn't no easter came and went and there was no book yeah and um People have asked me, well, why is that? Why didn't it come out at Easter? And I tell them, well, it was, you know, my agent wanted to have another look at it or, uh, you know, it was with another publisher who wanted to have a look at it. And whilst all those things were true, it wasn't quite the whole truth because... I could have chivied my agent along and I could have said to the other publisher, you know, no, it's, it's already, you know, this, it's already going to come out under this publisher and yada, yada, yada. But I, I didn't, I kind of, in, in, if I'm completely honest with you, Michelle, I just, I did everything I could to prevent the book from being published. Why? Because I was scared. Why? Because, a failure. Well, this novel has been 10 years in the making. Right. Okay, and it's a, it's a journey that um, that Kate set me off on. When I met her, I, yeah. you know, I'd stopped writing. I'd write, wrote mm. short stories when I was in my 20s, and then, you know, I, but I didn't ever do anything with the short stories, probably because I was scared. Yeah. And then she found these short stories one day, and she read them, and she laughed, and she thought they were good, and she said, you ought to write, start writing again. She started me writing, and mm. I wrote this funny little piece about, you know, how I'm going to meet Kylie Minogue, how she'll break down outside the house and knock on the door and ask to use my phone. Blah, blah, blah. We've all had those dreams. Yeah, and she thought it was hilarious, and yeah. she said this would be a, a fantastic opening chapter to a novel. And I started writing this this novel, and this was you know ten years ago mm. when I when I met Kate, and um, it's this there's a decade of hopes and dreams wrapped up in these words, and I, you know, I I thought what's stopping me from publishing it is because you know what if i publish it and nobody buys it or mm. what if i uh, publish it and people buy it but they don't like it or what if i publish it they buy it and they like it but they don't really like it that much or you know um or they don't you know or don't sell that many copies or you know maybe this will be the first and last novel i ever write mm. or maybe this will be the last book i ever write you know maybe this will herald the end of my writing career and that fear mm. Has it sort of like held me back from actually putting the book out there? P- people often think that I left credit card banking because how to do everything and be happy took off. They mm. thought, you know, I wrote a book while I was in banking, and that and that took and that took off, and I turned my uh, turned my back on a um, a career in banking. But 
isn't actually true. I left credit card banking because I realised yet again that life's too short to be doing anything that doesn't make you 100% happy. Yeah, yeah. And so I had this half-finished novel on my desk, I had a half-finished self-help book, I had some money in the bank and dreams of what life could be, you know, if I, if I put some effort in. And so I took it all and made the most crazy decision of my life and I took this leap of faith and one day I just... Uh, my contract expired and I didn't do anything to chase up renewal or anything like that and I just left the office and people said see you on Monday Jonesy and I went okay and I just and I left and, yeah. I, and I never went back With 1500 credit cards signed in <laughs> 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 just keep going <laughs> and I start you know and I thought to myself well, what I'll do is I'll finish this novel and I'll find yeah. an agent and I'll do all the things you're supposed to do and uh, also, at the same time, you know, I'll, I'll self-publish this little self-help book, uh, you know, maybe that'll do something. And it, and it did uh, take off. Uh, it, was, it was a leap of faith. But yeah. what I've realised in the past few weeks and months is that I'm still mid-leap and I'm sort of terrified to sort of see it through. Mm. You know, I, I haven't... The, you know, I found an agent, and uh, uh, you know, and uh, for and uh, well, actually, several agents for the, uh, took took a look at the novel, and the novel's finished. Mm. You know, and uh, it's nothing to stop it from being published. But I was, I'm still terrified to let it to let it go out there. And I've spent my whole life being terrified. When I was younger, I was terrified of asking girls out. I was terrified of failing my exams. I was terrified of going to youth club. I was terrified of travelling, of going to places where, you know, I might meet people uh, that I don't know. Yep. You know, I was terrified of being uh, people seeing me in real life and seeing somebody who was vulnerable. And sometimes I wish I could go back in time and tell that kid, you know, give that kid a, a few, a kick out of the backside yeah. and tell him a few home truths. I'd tell him, you know, ask that girl out. Forget about studying, you know, it's a waste of time at school. You know, go to flipping youth, cl youth club. Well, honestly, you know, yeah. no, honestly, yeah. you're told, aren't you, to spend, you know, get your exams, your, the qualifications, they're really important. Well, I, you know, I hope there's no kids listening. They're all at school there. <laughs> <Yes, right. laughs> they're all at school holidays, so yes. they could be. But I'm here to tell you, forget it. It's a waste of time. You know, uh, it, it, you know, it's, you know, are much more important type of things you could be spending. Travel the world. Mm. You know, get out there, do things. And I was I was talking to Della Gorton, you know, you know um, uh, the author Della Gorton the yep. other day about this very thing, and uh, she suggested that whilst it's too late to go back in time mm. and and help out little Peter. It's not too late for future Peter to come back and change me, to give me a few yeah. home truths. And I got to wondering what uh, future me might say if he, he were to appear right now. And I think he would say, publish that book. Yep. And I might say, well, what if nobody buys it? And he might say, they will. And yep. I say, well, what if only a few people buy it? And he says, well, then tell a few more about it. And I, I might say, well, what if nobody likes it? And he'll say, well, it, some people won't like it, but some people will. And I think he'd tell me to write more books and take more risks and throw myself out there even more and try even harder and reach for the blinking stars. And I got wonder uh, to wondering if this future me was the successful me or an unsuccessful me, and maybe that was advice from the successful future me, and maybe the unsuccessful future me would tell me something different. So I thought about it for a bit and thought, no. No, unsuccessful me would probably say exactly the same thing. In fact, he probably might even tell me to try even harder. Because, you know, maybe if I just stay the way I am now, that's how unsuccessful me comes about. In which mm. case he'd say, no, get the book out there. Tell loads of people about it. Write it. Take some more risks. Push yourself, you know, and, and, you know, and try harder. So I was thinking about all of these things the other day, which is what I thought we'd we I thought I'd come here to Happy Club today, and we'd talk to you know we'd ask the listeners what they thought and what was holding them back. Well, we've got a few questions, but we're just going to go to some travel and some ads, and then we're going to come back with more from you. Right, and then we will. Uh, you can tell us the title of your book as well when you come back. Okay, and eat, right. eat, eat one of those chocolate fingers. Don't leave them to waste. <laughs> I'll do that. I am joined in the studio by Peter Jones, author. You can check out his website, all the W's, peterjonesauthor.com. Writer of books uh, such as Eat, Loads and Stay Slim, Invisible to Irresistible, Start Dating and Stop Waiting, How to Do Everything and Be Happy. Because I'm happy. Yeah, well, we normally pay our jingle again now. We're not going to do that? No. Okay. Uh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Uh, We've got time. We've got, we got, we got, we got, we got to move it along. I want to try and squeeze all the six foot four of you into a little bundle. Uh, <laughs> a little bundle of happiness. <laughs> I just said to you, I went, why did you never <laughs> tell me you're married. I, meant to tell, I was talking about a conversation you're talking about somebody, somebody else. Somebody else. You just looked at me like I've gone insane. Yeah. Why? Well, I literally was about to leap in with an apology. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know. No, I, I was, yeah, well, I was. It wasn't about... See, I do that sometimes. My, my brain doesn't engage yeah. with my gob. <laughs> 
10 to 1 <laughs> weekdays normally <laughs> so come on tell me what is um uh, what about you have you uh, what are you terrified of what's holding you back what's um, sto- what was future michelle say to you at the moment i'm in a good place and i'll tell you why because good. my my best friend uh, pep uh, who was actually guest on my show a couple of years ago and you may remember you can check out a yeah. really lovely guy he died in january he had yeah. cancer and he died and i decided uh, and also my dad died the follow uh, the year before in the in the january yeah. and i just decided that the thing to do was not to wallow and put things all over facebook about i miss them so much please yeah. feel sorry for me feel yeah. sorry for me because it's about me isn't about me it's no. about them yeah. and i made a real decision to think to myself i'm not going to wallow in pit- self-pity for myself because i've lost my best yeah. mate and my dad because that is not that doesn't serve their memory any good whatsoever no. and it's all about yourself and how sorry you have to feel for yourself yeah and i thought i'm not going to do that he's not here so i'm going to do more i've done more this year by getting another job i've been doing more singing that's I've brilliant competitions i've done yes. much more yeah. and I've, i might whole attitude yeah. even when i feel some days you have down days but you know not really anything major. so in a way it was like future michelle had come back and said you know yeah, life is short buck your ideas, buck up your and, ideas and, and think up. about the life that he can't have i mean Get he wasn't there. very old um, how old was he if you don't mind me asking yeah so that's not, the same age as me yeah not old at all and no. uh, got cancer and uh, fought it you know as i say for, you fight cancer and he yeah. really really did for two years yeah um and uh, you know it was and, and i'll tell you what about pep as well he had he'd had a quite a, a, a life of oh i can't get a decent job i can't do this can't do this and he'd just got to a point in his life where he had the music he yeah. had his job he had a wonderful wife he'd met yeah. been married five years yeah totally in love like teenage just the whole thing yeah and then as you said bang, cut short. it was cut short yeah we and don't ha- know and you have to think about that and it isn't you, i'm not trying to make people feel miserable but it is about no it no it's about the, doing trying to do whatever you right can now. no we're not trying to make people miserable. not worried about, the, you, not worried about being fat it's the reverse or old or short or wherever yes. else you've got problems with your life forget yeah. that you've got to move on and do what you want to do well, yeah it's life is short you don't know how many you honestly don't know no. how i mean we all walk around thinking oh you know i'm gonna make it to sort of 70s 80s that so don't we i do yeah. and you think you've got ages yeah you know um so but you might not and so it's like i mean we get we so many people go to jobs that they don't like yeah. or you know or in relationships that are doing them no good or mm. you know and they think oh i'll fix it tomorrow or next month or you know things will be better when blah yeah. blah blah you haven't got that you haven't necessarily got that time yeah you just want to be happy you don't have to be i mean it's just little and it also to do things in tiny little stages so yeah. you know with me it was like i've got more singing work i've entered, I entered some competitions yeah. and i kind of did things that i thought well actually this time last year i would never would have done that no. and put myself out there for the you. fear of people saying oh and now i don't care because a lot of people might go you're the best singer we've ever heard and most people do uh, but then there <laughs> are a few people that might might i've never heard it but there might be a few people that might say well she's, she doesn't look right or she's this and that but, I, but to be quite honest i don't care no and you can't care you just have to get on and keep smiling yeah because there are always going to be those yeah. people aren't there but the it's a, but it's n- but the thing i found is that it's not going to be 100 percent of the people no. very rarely is that the case no. you know and most of the most of the time those people say those <laughs> things behind your back yeah. and um but and other you know other, you always find that people come forward and sort of like you know a number of people have told me how much they love how to do everything and be happy yeah. you know oh, i love that book you know i've got friends all over the world now mm. and i think of them as friends as well they're readers you know have contacted yeah. me on facebook and the like you know and um you know it's t- some st- some really good stuff came out of that mm. and good stuff will come out of the novel well what questions have questions we got? right we got to uh, so it's what's holding you back from being fabulous yeah uh, mel said i'm fabulous too i wouldn't mind a bit of advice from peter though right. i found a, a load of stuff i've written and reading some of it Ooh. back it seems okay is yeah. it worth me joining a writer's circle yeah. i need to have some impetus to get me in the zone yeah. i had three novel ideas but i'm also about to get stuck into my dissertation uh due, is that right it is due to go in march yeah. should i set aside some time daily weekly to write my own stuff yes <laughs> <laughs> to all of, to oh. all of the above yes yeah. absolutely mel it's a shame billa ricky writers used to uh i used to go to something called billa ricky writers oh. and um run by elizabeth lord the author elizabeth lord and uh, it was great uh absolutely great group and um but that folded a little while ago mm. uh, because of health reasons and um but there are bound to be other writing groups in the area yeah. and so yeah go along 
Absolutely. Sylvia Kent is another good person to yes. uh, find on. Drop on, her a line. On. Drop Sylvia Kent. She's yeah, a she'll know. Because there's Brentwood everything. writers as yes, well, isn't there? I've been writers to Brentwood are. writers, and they're, and they're a big group, and yeah. they're a lovely, lovely group of people, very friendly. Yep. And uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, because we're coming up to the news, I'm going to play a quick song. If you can bear with me, we'll come back after the news. Really? Yes. I don't normally do Ex- that with no. people because I don't want to cut you off in the middle oh. of the. So we can have a little tune. All right. And then we're going to come back. Okay. Lovely. UK. And now we're just having a little bit extra, but it's always uh, nice to have a little bit extra with Peter <laughs> Jones. Uh, Peter Jones, author, is in the studio, and uh, we've been talking uh, about um, how, you, how you can be more fabulous. It's far about how you can be more fabulous. Are well, you we are, no, it kind of, yeah, how you can be more fabulous, or what's holding you back. What's holding you back from being, yeah. I keep saying flabulous. Flabulous. <laughs> Which is not good. All the W's, uh, peterjones.author.com, uh, you can find out loads more about Peter as well. And you've got your, um, we've got some questions, we just answered yeah. Mel's question. Yeah. Uh, Denise has said, could her husband move into my spare... Oh, couldn't host. Her husband's her husband. Called, it's you. <laughs> she went, can Peter Jones move into my spare room? Mm. My husband's called Peter. Right. And be my guru for a year. I need okay. positive stick to beat me. Oh, dear. I have gone almost... I'm almost 54 nearly at retirement, which, of course, is rubbish. Getting a bit tired and battling the world. Yeah, you're not near retirement for... No, uh, she's for, 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 you know, just for 54... Queen. Yeah. yeah, no, that's young. She lives, that I know Denise, she lives for her children. Yeah. Lives her life, and she should be living her own life, not through her children. Right. Do you not think? Yeah, well, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking, how big's that spare room? Because, you know... How big's that stick? <laughs> Because I could. Well, no, she wanted me to be the st- beating her with the stick. Yeah, I know, but I wouldn't. Yeah. Go, I wouldn't go. That's my sister. I wouldn't go into that house if I was. Oh, that life. I see. Yeah, my right. Uh, Nothing like me though. Well, you, she uh, she doesn't need me to move in and uh, beat her with a positive stick. She could do that to herself. Okay, I think what she needs to think is, you know, what would uh, what's your sister's name again? It's Dean. We she's called Denise, but we call her Dina. Okay, Dina. Well, what you need is what would future Dina say to you now, and then go and do that. Thing. Yeah, but she has had, to be fair, quite a good old life. Yeah, well, you know, but th- th- I noticed that about being happy and, you know, and achieving ambitions. Yeah. And, you know, the sky's the limit, you know. Mm. You, 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 um, you can always, you can always go, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. You can go on, you can, you can be even happier, you can do even bigger things and better things. Yeah. Yeah. Now your book. Yeah. Which we nearly, which you were cutting a piece of. Uh, we had a bit of the chocolate Swiss roll from yeah. Master Spencer's. Ever so tasty. Yeah. And you did trumpet. I haven't tried one of the chocolate mini fingers, but I no. thought because you were coming in, I got you. Ah, oh, I say you got it for you. you. You're only having a slice. Yeah. No, that's very kind of you. It to was get very me kind. Of you. Now your book. Have you got into? Well, it's not out yet, is it? It's no, that's a proof copy. <gasps> that is a, that's a proof copy you're holding in your hands, and it's mm. out uh, the 12th of September is the official date. Unofficially, it's actually, if you go onto Amazon right now, you'll find it and you could you can buy it but on the 12th of september then there'll be a fanfare i'll be sort of like you know, jumping around uh, and uh, singing from the rooftops and also the book the ebook will be like a quid or something like oh, that wow, for a few yep. d- for a couple for a few days for yep. the weekend or something like that so the official launch date is the 12th of september but um, yeah if you can't wait it's actually it's actually there right now can i just read this bit on the back yeah go on liz where do i start i suppose the end is as good a place as any Boxing Day 1997, Jason Smith, 29, self-confessed good guy, is single again. And now that he is, it seems all the single girls, the Melanie Jacksons of the world, are in short supply. Or are they? Has Jason stumbled on a foolproof way to find the girl of his dreams? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Do you like the little pause there? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Very, Sorry. Yeah, no, very dramatic. <laughs> it was a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of like a Bridget Jones's diary, but mm-hmm. from a from a man's point of view. It's, now, a, it's a rom, it's a rom com. Who would be now? Just to put it in people's minds. Who would play the lead characters in a film? Uh, well, gosh, that's that's uh, that's a tricky one. I I do when I was writing it, I I um I went on the internet and I found uh, actors and actresses um, who who I think would play mm. all of all of the characters. 
he, he, there's two guys. There's Jason and it's his beer loving pal Alex mm -hmm. and um, and and his ever sarcastic colleague Sean. Nick Frost. Uh, Nick Frost. Yes. No. Hey. He no. He would be perfect yeah. for Alex. Yeah. yeah. He would be perfect for Alex. Um, or ja or James uh, Gordon. What's Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. yeah. He would be fantastic. He would be mm. a brilliant Alex. Uh, people who've uh, friends and family have read the book. Yeah. Really love the character of Alex because Alex says all the things which you shouldn't really say yeah. out loud. Uh, whilst Jason is your sort of like boy next door, sort of like, you know, uh, the knight in white shining armour sort of mm -hmm. like character. And then you've got, you know, he's a, and then Melanie Jackson is his old school crush, who he's sort of, uh, you know, obsessed about, the girl mm -hmm. who got away. Yeah. Well, it's lovely for you to come to the studio. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you, yeah. and we'll shall see you next month. And your list of books are... Uh, how to do everything and be happy. One. Uh, how to eat loads and stay slim. Two. How to start dating and stop waiting. Three. From invisible to irresistible. Four. The good guy's guide to getting the girl. Five. And coming up in September. <laughs> No, that is the oh, good sorry, guy. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never mind, right, uh, ended badly, then I'll, I'll edit no, that bit edit out. that bit out. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Peter. Right, we're going to kick off with some Jason Mraz with Make It Mine.